Good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. This is a little bit of a different kind of video today. This one is not about the football. Still about Manchester United, as usual. But of course, it's about us rather speaking about things that have happened off the field. Uh, this is something we want to do more often going forward in the channel. And uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, let us know. Today, specifically, we'll be talking about the Ed Woodward controversy that's come out of the club. Of course, Shawnee joins me for today's video. It's just the two of us. Um, my partner in crime. It's it's a sad, sad, sad story that's come out. And uh, if you haven't heard about it, basically what's happened is an alleged group of Manchester United fans uh, showed up at Ed Woodward's home. I'm not sure if it was last evening or, you know, because we're obviously not in the UK and, uh, you know, I got that in the education, so I don't know how the time works. But basically the fans attacked Ed Woodward's home. They lit up, they lit up a couple of flares and vandalized his property Luckily, nobody was hurt. So, um, you know, first of all, let's have a look at the statement from the club. Uh, this is from The Sun, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. Um, this is what Manchester United had to say. Thankfully, Woodward, his wife, Isabel, and six-year-old twins are not to believe to have been at home. But Manchester United have rightfully released a strong statement on the matter. They said, Manchester United Football Club have tonight been made aware of the incidents outside the home of one of our employees. We know that the football world will unite behind us as we work greater with greater Manchester United police to identify the perpetrators of this unwarranted attack. Anybody found guilty of a criminal offense or found to be trespassing on this property will be banned for life by the club and may face serious, uh, may face prosecution. That sounds very serious is what I meant to say. Fans expressing opinion is one thing. Criminal damage and intent to endanger life is another. There is simply no excuse for that. Anti-Woodman anti sentiment has steadily been growing in recent weeks, becoming uncomfortably personal in the wake of United's relative underachievement. Disgusting songs wishing death upon the United Chief have been creeping into Old Trafford with vile chants heard during the last week's defeat to Burnley. Now, when I read that statement, there's a lot about it that makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, I think uh, a line has definitely been crossed here. I think, you know, you and I can both agree a line has been crossed. But when it comes to the end part, you know, this is nothing new in the footballing world. Obviously, attacking personal residents is a bit unusual. But with regards to the songs being sang at Old Trafford and the Vile stuff, I don't think this is anything new from the UK, the fans in the UK. Like, there's some pretty harsh fans out there, harsh football fans. Um, no, yeah. yeah, I think, you know, with the chance and everything, I think, you know, I think when it comes to terms of uh, this whole Woodward situation, I think, you know, the chanting and those sort of things in the stadium, I think <clears throat> that's more warranted. And, you know, you know, just like uh, peaceful protests like that is warranted, but then, you know, attacking at the man's house and his family you know that's a bit that's taking it a bit too far yeah it's criminal i mean you have broken the law so you know um whether or not you think ed woodward deserved it the point is it's criminal um we live in a society with rules and regulations and if you cannot abide by those rules and regulations you end up in prison or in jail rightfully so um and rules are there for a reason. And so this sort of thing um, is, it's unfortunate. And I'm not going to pretend like I have sympathy for Ed Woodward. I have sympathy for Ed Woodward as a human being. And I would have had sympathy for his family if anybody got hurt. But I don't have sympathy for Ed Woodward, the guy who runs the place at Manchester United. I don't. Um, and that's just my opinion. Uh, I'm not condoning the violence, obviously. But, you know, I think this the sympathy towards him is not going to, it's not going to blind us from what he's done, obviously, is what I'm saying. Um, I want to talk a bit about why this has happened, you know, because it's very easy to talk about whether it's wrong or right. But do you think that this is kind of Ed Woodward's fault? Do you think that partially it's his fault because he's been such a bad CEO? Or do you think some of the, 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 the direction should is wrongfully blamed at him and they should actually be attacking the top. If there's anyone to attack, it should be the Glazers because they're the ones who employed him. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on that. What do you think? 
Listen, you know, I think Woodward had this coming for a long time, you know. Yeah. I think, you know, it just shows that the fans uh, had enough, even if they are fans, you know, I don't even know if they yeah. were Manchester United fans. They could have been, just been some hooligans or thugs, you know. Yeah. And it's just a small minority of them that have done this. But, you know, from a Woodward point of view, I mean, you expect this coming, you know. The chanting at the home grounds and, you know, social media should be enough, you know, to try to release a statement. They shouldn't have to resort to this type of violence and a home yeah. invasion to get a small statement or even a reaction out of the club. I think that's wrong. But, you know, this is this is where we are it's, as a club and as fans. And, you know, this is the situation. You know, with the guys saying that they have sympathy for Woodward and things, you know, I've seen many non-United fans say that, this is completely wrong and, you know, their fan base will never. But then again, you know, their fan, their clubs aren't really run the way United are run. You know, this is yeah. a club that was so big before, you know, had uh, CEO David Gill and Sir Alex Ferguson who were managing this club very well. And then since 2013, we've had Ed and yeah. more so now the Glazers as well, just completely tearing us apart. So I think Woodward did have this coming. I obviously don't do not condone violence like this in any ways, but... They had this coming, like, you know, and when yeah, I feel anyone, sympathy for Ed Woodward, I, I have this, no sympathy. I've got yeah, nothing. It, if this should happen to anyone, it should be him, you know. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be honest. And I think um, it would be easier the for the attack to be on him because, you know, the Glazers are mainly in America. They don't really care about the football, you know. They just go on about their lives, just running, they thinking a brand for in a business. So, I think yeah, Woodward was the easier so guy to really have get. A, yeah. They don't really have a, a part to play in the operations and the day to day of Manchester United. You know, they're just owners. So they don't need to show up at the office. They don't need to live in the UK. Um, I think that's pretty basic. Yeah, look, I think it, you hit it hammer on the head. Uh, you know, it was a long time coming. You know, um, I've heard people saying that this should be directed more towards the Glazers because it's not really Woodward's fault. Yes, Woodward has been a bad CEO and a bad vice chairman or whatever. But that the owner should then be on the people who hired him to be like, mate, you're not doing your job. You know, Woodward can only try his best to do his job the way he thinks is best, even though you might not agree with what, you know, what he thinks is best. And I think the problem with that is that, as you said, the Glazers don't actually live in the UK. They're not really there. They're, all, they're mostly in America. So even if these fans, even if this attack was justified, they couldn't attack the Glazers. Like nobody's going to fly to America <laughs> to attack the Glazers, you know? Yeah, exactly. With regards to other fans, look, yes, specifically with the attack on his house, that is wrong. But the chance at the stadium, whether or not you agree with them, because personally, I don't condone violence, even if it's in the form of chanting. Like, I don't think you should be singing about chopping someone up and putting them in a bonfire. But that's nothing new. That's been happening for years in football. There's like the fans. I, I remember my uh, my my old. Um, English teacher in grade nine, he was from the UK and he used to tell us stories about how passionate people are in the UK. To some people, this is a religion. To some people, this is a culture. To some people, that's how important this club is and that's how important many clubs are. So it's not just Manchester United fans who are like this when they want something to change for over seven years. Mm. Uh, and with regards to the chanting specifically, I'm not saying there isn't anything wrong with it, but I'm just saying it's nothing new. The club is pretending like this is this is something new, like this is something that hasn't been happening. And like you say, it's sad that the club only speaks out about these sorts of things or gets a reaction after this. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the conspiracy theories, you know, get your thoughts on the conspiracy theories. Now, one of the main theories floating around amongst the fans is that the Sun, uh, I think it, it's that the Sun have allegedly been paid by, like, this is a setup. By yeah, it's a whole PR stunt. Yeah, stunt. The PR stunt. Yeah. yeah, because it's a PR stunt because essentially to explain is because the Sun were there before anyone else, before the police, before any other media outlets. The Sun, and in particular, a person who's connected to the Sun, has now been hired by Manchester United as a PR advisor. So, uh, you know, all the pieces kind of fall together. And so people are saying that the Sun is responsible for this and they're helping they're helping us they're helping they're trying to help bring up Edward with image by getting sympathy out of the fan base what do you think of that i mean you know what like i said there's no there's no police reports or any proof saying otherwise that it's not a conspiracy theory like you look at the pictures on the screen here on this poster 
I mean, yeah. this looks like professional pictures, like that one specifically at the bottom right. Like, you yeah. know, that looks like a professional photograph of at the scene. And, you know, this whole thing about it being a PR stunt, you know, if there ever is a club or a man who's sadistic enough to do it, it's probably Ed Woodward. And, you know, it's no, it's no, it's no surprise to the United fans that United did hire Neil Ashton from The Sun to boost his yeah. PR stuff. We are, it's not a secret to see other mainstream media outlets like The Sun, you know, Sky Sports and all, and like, you know, other other journalists saying that this is wrong, you know, the chants are wrong and all of that to protect the board and, you know, basically the guys who employ them to put that news out there. You know, United do leak that information and, you know, they do try to get the name into a positive line like to not get so much hate. But, you know, again, like, if it is a PR stunt, that's, they will never get back from that if they can somehow prove it's a PR stunt. Uh, like I said, I don't think United fans are that stupid or oblivious. You know, I think United fans are one of the smartest around, especially in the UK ones and just everywhere around the world. You know, United fans, they know what they talk about most of the time. But if the poli- the poli- it's up to the police now to, uh, to show whether or not this was a PR stunt or it was actually yeah. a legit case that happened. You know, and it's ironic that it happened at a certain time, the Sun and uh, other journalists and publishers were there on the scene and then two hours later the cops were informed and then the cops released a statement as after that as the Manchester yeah. police. So it's a bit, you know, all the guys who think it's a conspiracy theories, I'm, I think I'm with them in the minority, you know, I am trying to play a devil's advocate role. Plus that and also just my frustration with Woodward, I've got no sympathy, like I said. So, you know, it's up to, I think it's up to the cops, the club and everything yeah. to try to prove whether it was a legit thing or whether it's a conspiracy theory or not. Well, it's a it's a conspiracy theory that uh, isn't too far out there, you know, because of all the dots that you that one can connect. I think, for me, I do think that it is a bit fishy that the sun was there before anybody else. But what I think has happened is that these fans organize the sort of thing with the sun because. And the reason why I say that is because the whole, with regards to the whole thing about Manchester United fans, if you don't know, now you know, there's a group of Manchester United fans who are allegedly planning a walkout in the 58th minute, I think, in the Wolves game. And nobody knows who they are, nobody knows what group they're affiliated with or what fan channel they're affiliated with. But the point is there's a group of Manchester United fans who want to make a statement. A few days later, there's Manchester United fans who attack Woodward's house. So to me, it looks like there's a Manchester United fan group out there that has been in contact with media companies and is trying to get attention uh, or trying to get the buzz about this Wood, about Ed Woodward, you know, getting the hashtag Ed Woodward out uh, trending and not just on Twitter, but I mean in real life, they're trying to draw attention to the fact that the fan base is upset with the ownership and how the club is being run. That's what I think is really happening. Um, yeah. That's just my opinion, and I, w- I wouldn't be, I'm not fully against the conspiracy theories. I think it's very possible, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is a PR stunt. But I think it's more plausible that the fans have just ringed up Sun and been like, hey, we're going to go to this guy's house at this time. If you guys want a story, come with us and see oh, yeah, what happens. Definitely. And, we uh, see media leaks happen all the time, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think both conspiracy theories are plausible, you know? Um, yeah, you know, guys... It's a heated debate about whether or not this thing is justified, and I think the general consensus amongst fans in the football world is that it's not justified, uh, is that this is too violent, but I look at it and what did they really do besides throw flares and vandalize the gate? You know, there and wasn't that, any, yeah. there wasn't From any the stones images, thrown. The videos I've seen, you know, like, it just looked like, you know, small things, you know, you see flares get thrown in football stadiums as well. Spray paint on the gate, I mean, like, come on. I mean, you see buses rolling into Anfield and there's flare outside the bus. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, how come that's okay, but this isn't? Um, you know, and I understand there's a line that's been crossed. It's a guy's personal home, you know, what his private life has nothing to do with his work life. I get all of that. And again, we are not condoning this at the Red Devils Africa. And, you know, but you just, you got to look at it from face value and you got to look at it objective and you got to look at both sides. You got to be a bit impartial sometimes, especially with the matter that's serious, because this is not about, as much as this channel is around fan opinion, this is not about me 
being right or Shawnee being right or you being right. This is about Manchester United Football Club, a club that we all love and a controversial incident that's taken place that has nothing to do with what's going on on the pitch. And so we've just got to remove our egos and look at this from face value. And, you know, I have to agree with Shawnee. This guy does not have my sympathy. He does not. It was a long time coming. And if you run the club the way it's supposed to be run and you don't remove an absurd amount of funds from the club and you don't do things and you actually communicate with your fans, even if it's just one fan, fan channel or even if it's just one method of communicating with Even fans, if it's if on just, MUTV, because on MUTV, sorry to cut you off, but even on MUTV, as yeah. soon as a caller brings something about the Glazers or Woodward, they cut the call and they make a joke out of it. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's, 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 ridiculous. that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So, you know, if you treat your fans with respect, things like this won't happen. I think we can look at this and have sympathy for Ed Woodward. And if you sympathize with Ed Woodward, you know, cool, you're a good human being. But don't forget why this has happened. Don't forget why this has happened. Do not forget what, this, what the root cause of all of this is. The root cause of all of this is our club's not being run properly. Financially and on the pitch, it's not being run properly. And if the club was being run properly, if our fans were respected, these things would easily be prevented because nobody's going to be throwing flares outside a mm -hmm. team that's winning titles or that's competing at a high level consistently and that respects his fans. Um, or even you know, like, you know, I don't think this would have happened if Ed Woodward did a press conference with the United fans and it was like, you know, yeah. no questions are restricted. Ask what you want to ask. I'll give uh, an opinion, even if I sway it or whatever. I'll still speak to you guys. We get it. It's just yeah. we get nothing yeah. out of this football club. None of this we propaganda. So much of you can't time, ask energy, questions. love into this football club, and we get nothing in return. Yeah, because fans are the bread and butter of all sports, not just football. All sport. You know, um, whether it's an e-sport or physical sport, you can't have a successful sport without the value, and the value you provide is through entertainment fans pay for that entertainment and keep your sport going and if you do not have fans you don't have a sport all you have is a bunch of guys running around in an empty stadium kicking a ball and not getting the salaries they deserve to get because there's no there's no revenue um so it's it's really unfortunate and i think to me this is more symbolic of a fan base that's fed up and sick and tired more than it is about a man's home allegedly being attacked by a group of Manchester United fans. That's what. That's the way I see it. Um, you know, and because this is a fan channel, you know, it's all about fan opinion. So you can get down in the comments down below, tell us what you think. But um, you know, Shoni, anything else you want to add, or have you said your bit? Nah, I don't really have much else to say. Yeah, so uh, we'll wrap it up there. Um, but yeah, none of this would have happened if it would we just and and the Glazers just respected this club and actually did the job for the badge rather than the green paper that sits in their bank accounts but please do leave a like on the video please do subscribe and uh please do comment and let us know if you enjoyed this kind of video uh we're planning on doing more of these not just about sad topics like this you know transfer news all that jazz off the pitch um and uh yeah we'll catch you in the next one guys peace